PTC or PR Eng? What's the difference and which one is the best? I'll take you through that now. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that have subscribed, thank you so much. Um, thank you to all of you guys that have been sending me direct messages and emails. There have been a lot of two-way conversations and great engagement. I've been learning a lot from you guys as well. So please do keep those channels of communication open. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please press that subscribe button below and also click on that notification button. That way you get notifications every time I upload new content. So one of the frequently asked questions is, what's the difference between the GCC and the PR Eng? And between the two, which one is better? So I'll share with you guys the key differences um, between the two accreditations. And I'll talk a bit about which one you want to get, especially for one application. So you'd have seen that I've got a lot of previous uploads on the GCC. So if you're wanting more insights on how to get the accreditation, the certification, please do look up some of the previous videos that I've uploaded. Basically, the GCC is the Government Certificate of Competency. It's an examination that you sit in on after two years of working experience, depending on what qualification you've got. It is for mechanical and electrical engineers, and you write two exams. So one is theory based off of the OSH Act, and the one is practical based on the entire syllabus of mechanical and electrical engineering. So one of the things with the GCC is that you get that accreditation through the Department of Labor. So PRNG is an accreditation that you get with EXA. It's so the Engineering Council of South Africa, not the Department of Labor. And with the PR Eng, there, as opposed to sitting in and writing exams, you compile a report based on the experience that you've got in your working environment. So you're given about three years, and in that three years, you should have covered basics of engineering, so regardless of which discipline you're in, you must have an example of a detailed design. What they've done now is that they've included an option of a design review. So you review a complex design within your factory or project or organization, or you can solve a complex problem. They're wanting to see that you can relate it back to first principles and you understand engineering practices. The third thing that you need to cover is management. So as an engineer, have you led a team of individuals? How are your project management skills? How is your influencing in order to get projects and work done? So with the X accreditation and with the PR Eng, you must be able to demonstrate those three things in order for you to get your accreditation. One of the things that they do require as well is an interview with the body. So you will be called in and they will interview you based on your report and based on your understanding of some of the fundamentals of engineering. So two key differences, the GCC, two years minimum experience, you must be 23 years or older. You write an exam based on theory and practical, especially demonstrating that you can apply back in the workplace. Whereas with the PR Eng, you gain your experience over a period of three years and you must compile a report ensuring that you've covered basics, that you've covered design or problem solving, and that you've been exposed to management and leadership. So remember, with the GCC, it's only for electrical and mechanical engineers. And for your X accreditation, your PR Eng, it's across uh, many of the disciplines. So MEC Eng, electrical, chemical, civil, your industrial engineering, um, mining, metallurgy, and also agricultural engineering as well. So in terms of your GCC, check out one of my previous videos on how you can get your GCC without a degree. So you don't necessarily need to have a degree from a university to sit in on a GCC exam. Whereas the PR Eng, there are different categories. If you're looking to be a PR Eng, so a professional engineer engineer, you must have a bachelor's. So what they look to establish with any accreditation, um, whether you're a PR Eng or you're a certified engineer, is that you work and operate under a code of conduct to ensure that everything that we do is to establish the right requirements and ensure that people are safe. So why would you go for a GCC versus a PR Eng and vice versa? So with the GCC or factories and mining engineers, there you're more in operations. Um, yes, you've got projects and whatnot, but you're exposed more to mining where you've got people interacting a lot more with machinery and equipment and you've got power generated or distributed in your in your in your plant or your factory or your mine that way your certified engineer will ensure that your installation your operation your machinery and equipment is installed in such a way that it doesn't cause harm to individuals and that you're compliant to the regulations and the law whereas with the PRH you would go for the accreditation if you're exposed more to project management to projects and design design reviews Yes, you may be working in a factory as well. It is more recognized if you're using it, especially in light of where you've got project management type operations and where you're designing. The GCC is a requirement by law. So the Department of Labor does 
mandate that you've got it, especially if you've got a, a certain size factory. Whereas a PR eng isn't necessarily mandated by law. So you may go to a factory and find that you don't have any of your engineers with a PR eng, but you must have an engineer with a GCC and a GMR 2.1, especially if you've got large operations. Your GCC is accredited um, or is recognized by the Department of Labor, whereas your PR eng and EXA is accredited and recognized by the Washington Accord, so international recognition. Both accreditations can give you an increased level of compensation depending on whether that is what your organization needs. So don't be disappointed if you get your PR eng, but you're in a factory um, where they're looking to have a certified engineer. So don't be despondent. It just means you're not in the right operation. So look at your environment. If you're more in factories and mines and the focus is on maintenance and operations, then rather focus more on getting your GCC and becoming a certified engineer. You're the most senior person on site when it comes to signing off projects and designs, ensuring that the installations are safe. Ultimately, you're signing off to say you're the person to be held accountable if any person were to get injured by a machine on site. Whereas with the PR eng, yes, you sign off your own designs, but you get that level of confidence to say you understand your design, you understand first principles and what the design or installation or project will land and that it will be safe for people to use. At the end of the day, we know throughout engineering that the role of the engineer is to make people's lives easier and to solve problems. So I'll continue to share further content on the PR Eng, the application process, some insights from colleagues that have the PR Eng and also from EXA themselves, what it is that you need to put together, some templates of reports so that you can guarantee that you get your accreditation with EXA. Comment below, of the two, which one do you feel from your experience is better? Remember to live your best life, learn as you grow and lead for change. Shout.